Native Plants, Right Plant, Right Place, brought to you by Wild One South Shore, Massachusetts Chapter. More resources at masswildones.org. Why Native Plants? Over thousands of years, wild plants have grown naturally, adapting to each region's unique environmental conditions. When grown in your garden, native plants bring beauty and excitement to your yard, creating a welcoming sanctuary that can be enjoyed at home along with many other benefits. Using native plants instead of non-native plants provides food, nectar, and habitat for birds, butterflies, and other wildlife saves water and reduces soil runoff and erosion, reduces the time, energy, and pollution of mowing, adds beauty to our environment, and so much more. The average American yard has alien plants, bushes, and a very sterile lawn. Most plants sold from nurseries are sold because they are pest free. These non-native plants often escape cultivation. Our insects need plants and lawns that are not sterile. Native plants are necessary for potentially 90% of our insect species to survive. These insects are called specialists and their caterpillars can only feed on specific native plants. One insect that we know well as a specialist is the monarch butterfly. Milkweed is the host plant for the monarch caterpillar. Without milkweed, we'll have no monarch butterflies. Another insect that is specialist is a Carner blue butterfly and their caterpillars feed on wild lupine. When driving through Maine, you'll see what looks like beautiful fields of naturally growing lupine. In actuality, these are non-native plants and they're hybrids which have taken over the turf of our Lupinus perennis, which is now sadly extinct in Maine. This in turn has nearly exterminated the Carner blue butterfly, whose caterpillars can only feed on this one species. Its numbers have fallen by 99%, with most of those losses occurring in the past 15 years. In addition, these insects are necessary for the survival of our songbirds. 96% of terrestrial birds rear their young on insects. So even if we think we are doing well by putting out bird food, we need to have bird food in the form of insects and we can have insects by having native plants. According to Doug Tallamy, one pair of chickadee parents brings anywhere from 390 to 570 caterpillars to their nest per day. They find those caterpillars on native plants, and it's not just chickadees who depend on caterpillars at family meal time. Using native plants saves water and reduces soil runoff and erosion. Nationwide landscape irrigation is estimated to account for nearly one third of all residential water usage, totaling nearly 9 billion gallons per day. Native plants are trees, shrubs, flowers, grasses, ferns, and other plants that originate and evolve in a region over time. These plants adapt to local climate and ecological conditions. Native plants have deep roots which can penetrate the native soil to depths of up to 16 feet. During the dry summer months, native root systems reach deep into the ground to find water, which is why native plants are more drought resistant than non-native plants. A typical lawn absorbs only 10% of the amount of stormwater that a natural landscape can absorb. As stormwater flows over the land surface, stormwater picks up potential pollutants that may include sediment, nutrients from lawn fertilizers, bacteria from animal waste, pesticides, metals from rooftops and roadways, and petroleum byproducts from leaking vehicles. Polluted stormwater runoff can be harmful to plants, animals, and people. Aim to keep rainwater on your property. Speaking of the root system of native plants, here are two plants that are native to the United States. Purple coneflower is not quite native to Massachusetts, but little blue stem <clears throat> is. Here's the root system of little blue stem, which is approximately six or seven feet deep. 
this is the root system of purple coneflower and its root system is about five feet deep. Compared to Kentucky bluegrass, the root system is only a few inches deep. And you can see why we struggle keeping non-native turf alive in this area. Today, American lawns occupy about 40 million acres of land, and a lawnmower pollutes as much in one hour as 40 cars driving, and 580 million gallons of gasoline are used in lawnmowers each year. Compare that to these two photos that are beautiful and also support wildlife. Pennsylvania sedge on the right supports 36 species of caterpillars. We have compiled a small list of better options in some of the common non-native plants we see in garden centers. Boxwood is a non-native plant. It does not really support wildlife and quite often actually has a bad smell to it compared to inkberry, which is native and provides winter cover. It's the host plant for the Henry's elfin butterfly caterpillar. Adult butterflies are attracted to the blooms. Fruits are eaten by birds and small mammals, and it's equally easy to find at garden centers in the area. We just know boxwood better. People love Rose of Sharon because it's a beautiful plant with gorgeous large blooms. But if you have this in your yard, you likely have hundreds of Rose of Sharon babies popping up as well. Rose of Sharon is a very aggressive non-native plant, and at some point this is likely to be put on the invasive plant list of Massachusetts. Our native hibiscus is equally as lovely, but balanced in the ecosystem it has evolved in. Butterfly bush was brought here from Asia and is beautiful, but it's also incredibly aggressive in the ecosystem it didn't evolve in. It outcompetes the native plants here that wildlife depend on, and generally caterpillars don't feed on the leaves, so it's not truly a support to the life cycle of the butterfly and moths in the area. It also has a low quality nectar. Our native sweet pepper bush is gorgeous, smells wonderful, can handle shade as well as part shade, and, and it blooms prolifically. Japanese honeysuckle is on the invasive plant list of Massachusetts, although it is a lovely plant. Our native trumpet honeysuckle is a great support to local hummingbirds and brooms and also blooms prolifically throughout the spring, summer, and even into autumn. Please don't plant tropical milkweed on the left, but plant the native butterflyweed on the right. Rosa rugosa is not yet on the invasive plant list of Massachusetts, but we are guessing that it will be at some point. It takes over native habitats, whereas many of our native roses do not. Carolina rose is one beautiful example of a native rose that has evolved in our ecosystem. Sweet autumn clematis is a favorite around here, but it's problematic. It's very aggressive and escapes cultivation. Our native clematis, woodbine or virgin's bower, is beautiful and beneficial. Vinca is a lovely ground cover, but that's all it has going for it. It's very aggressive, as ground covers often are, and unfortunately available widely in garden centers. You can often see where this has escaped cultivation into woods, taking over what was native habitat. There are so many better native alternatives, such as wild strawberry, wild ginger, and three-toothed cinquefoil. One plant we often see in the area is burning bush, and people love the beautiful fall color. However, it doesn't really support wildlife and is extremely invasive. A better alternative is our high bush blueberry. It has the same beautiful fall color, but it's actually a benefit to our environment. Oftentimes people will say that their burning bush doesn't spread and theirs isn't a problem. What they don't realize is that birds will come and eat the berries off the burning bush, fly out into the woods where seeds are deposited, and these burning bush pretty quickly will grow and take over what was native habitat.
if the blueberry bush spreads, it actually is great for the environment and it supports life around it. Native plants are beautiful. They can fill a meadow, but they can also be used in more formal settings. They can be as organized and well manicured as you like. Our yards also don't have to be all native. If we aim to have more native than non-native, that's a good place to start. Perfection isn't the goal. Wild Once National has developed beautiful native planting plans. The Boston area plan is coming very soon, but in the meantime, other areas are available and they could serve as a good jumping off point. You can visit wildones.org for the plans. Thanks for joining us. You can find more information at masswildones.org, wildones.org, or you can visit our Facebook page at Mass Wild Ones, South Shore Chapter. Take care.